Oh, Jordan. Oh, I haven't seen this in a while. You looked in the instruction manual, didn't you? I told you not to do that. Come on, I got a video to shoot. Welcome back to Beer TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're looking at a very cool device. I have a TechArt LMEA9. This is their autofocusing adapter to adapt Leica M mount lenses to Sony E mount bodies and give them autofocus. Very cool device. Let's deep dive. So for our shoot today, we're at the Saskatoon Berry Farm just outside of Calgary. It's a wonderful place to explore, and we got beautiful light and gorgeous landscapes too. Now this is the latest edition of the TechArt autofocusing adapter. Their LMEA7, the earlier version, it's been a long time. They had one big servo motor on the bottom here. And what it basically does is drives a mechanical helicoid, gives you 4.5 millimeters traverse, and it autofocuses manual focus lenses by interfacing with Sony's PDAF system, and then actually physically moving the lens in and out to achieve focus on the sensor plane. Now that old system had that big bulky motor on the bottom, it extended below the bottom of the camera, it would interfere with tripod plates. Now this new version uses four motors that are radially aligned around the lens mount and it really makes it much more compact, nothing sticking out of the bottom. It also should be faster and smoother autofocusing as well. So overall build quality on this new TechArt LMEA 9 adapter is really quite nice. I mean, it's machined beautifully, feels tight on the mount, there's no give, but these are not weather sealed in any way, keep that in mind. And actually the front of the helicoid, it's quite open. I wouldn't want to get any dust or grit in there. I'd be really careful about the front of that. Otherwise though, the focusing motors, I would say, a little bit of an obtrusive sound here, you can hear it going on here. Kind of a funny whirring noise, but it's not terrible. It's not super obtrusive when you're shooting. So overall, really nice, really well designed. Now I'm using the latest firmware on this LAEA9 adapter and updating it was actually very simple. They actually provide you with this back cap, which also doubles as a USB dock. Micro USB port plugs right into USB on my computer. It's nice that you can then change things on this adapter, update things and easily program it through that dock when you need to. Now this adapter actually does make use of Sony's advanced autofocusing capabilities as well. So it does support real-time tracking. It also supports face and eye detect. And beyond just basically autofocusing like an M-mount lenses, you can use SLR to M-mount adapters so that you can autofocus Canon FD glass or Nikkor F glass. I mean, you know, all sorts of stuff. Beyond that, what does it do for you? Well, it does give you in some cases a little bit more extension to actually work like a macro extension tube. All right, so I got a cute little B shot here. And this is a good example to illustrate what this tech art adapter can do right now it's extended quite out 4.5 millimeters and i've set the close focusing on the lens to its minimum now normally the like m35 millimeter is kind of around a two foot focusing distance but right now i'm as you can see much closer than that so i'm getting that extension kind of capability i wouldn't call it macro but it's certainly getting it closer than it normally would it also lets you input limited metadata. This is nice for lenses that normally don't have any electrical connection. However, what today's review is gonna be about is explaining a lot of the hoops that you have to jump through to make a lot of these things work, understanding just how to operate it. It comes with an instruction manual. It's on one folded piece of paper and honestly, it's quite limited. So today's review is really gonna be about explaining how do you use the new TechArt adapter. But let's talk about the main thing this adapter does. It gives you autofocus with lenses that don't normally allow that. And it actually does it quite well. It seems very accurate. The eye detect works. I like the tracking, that works well. I will say though that it largely only focuses in sort of the central portion of the frame. More towards the extreme edges, you often will lose tracking or it just won't be able to focus there. That's fine though. I mean, where most of your subjects are, it does a pretty good job. I wouldn't call it quick. Now the original adapter is actually supposed to be quite slow. This is quite a bit faster. We never tested the original adapter, but judging by the speed of this one, I can only imagine how slow the old adapter was. Here, I would say, you know, it takes a few steps. Sometimes you gotta push the shutter button or AF on button a few times to get it to really grab on and engage. When it does, it takes steps to actually get there. And so I would say, in portrait situations, this could be really nice, candid, still life, obviously. I find it very effective, seem good even in low light situations, but I, for tracking moving subjects, you know, kids running towards you, action, it's just, it's too slow to cut it. 
Now, as far as setting up the lens to do the autofocusing, it's really quite simple in most cases. So if I'm using wide angle lenses like this Leica M35 millimeter F2 today, anything up to around 50 millimeters, you could basically set the focus on the lens to infinity and then just let the tech art do the rest. And I didn't really find I needed to adjust that. I do also have a Voigtlander 75 millimeter 1.5. And as you go more telephoto, if you set the lens to infinity focus, you actually lose a lot of close focusing distance to the point where you might have to be quite far away from your subject to get it to focus. And so in those situations, it's just a little bit more fiddly, I can always manually focus the lens to a closer range and then let the tech art adjust from that point. And so that does sometimes work. This all just, again, slows down the entire process. Now tech art is saying you can basically adapt so many different lenses depending on what mounts you can find on the market to put in front of this thing but there are weight limitations so they're saying that you can basically only use lenses up to about 500 grams roughly in weight you could push a little bit further than that maybe the autofocus slows down makes more noise but it seems to be working okay but what if you want to get into like really wide aperture lenses that are quite heavy or longer telephotos or adapting a lot of SLR glass which might just get physically heavy well in those cases actually what a lot of people are doing is rather than holding the camera and having that weight on the tech art straining it, because camera body is usually quite light, what a lot of people are doing is actually just grabbing onto the heavier lens and then focusing with the tech art and letting it actually adjust the body back and forth. And that seems to work okay, especially using something with a tripod collar, for example, on a tripod. So there are ways to get around it. So next, let's talk about setting your focal length and getting that metadata to show through on the camera. One of the big advantages is here, just so you can know what lens you shot the picture with, but also it does help the Sony steady shot in automatic mode know how much to compensate with its in-body image stabilization. Although keep in mind on most Sony bodies, you can also manually set the focal length to be compensated for. So long story short, how do we do this? Well, you pick. Ha! But I have to say off the bat, this is not an elegant system. It's clunky, it's fiddly, it's convoluted, it works, but well, I'll just try to explain it and hopefully it makes sense. So here's the idea. Anytime you're shooting on the Sony bodies, you have them in manual mode or aperture priority mode, both work fine. What you're actually gonna do is shoot all of your pictures with the camera body's aperture setting set to F2. Now that doesn't mean the lens has to be set there as well. You can set the aperture on the lens to whatever you want, but the body has to say F2.0. That is where it will expose properly your shots. Now. When I'm changing lenses, well, then I'm gonna do something different. So for example, I've put on a 35 millimeter lens. How do I program that focal length metadata in? I actually go onto the Sony body, use a command dial, and set the aperture, in this particular case, to f5.6. You actually have a chart. Have a look at it here. You're gonna to wanna to carry this with you. Take a picture of it on your phone when you're shooting this thing, I don't know. By changing the aperture on the Sony body and then taking a couple random shots, that is what tells the tech art what focal length you're using. In this case, on the chart, f5.6 means 35 millimeter lenses. Then I set it back to f2 on the body, but any subsequent pictures I take, the metadata will show I'm using a 35 millimeter focal length. Now, if I change lenses, then what I have to do is go on to that command dial, go to the right f-stop number that will program the tech art with the right focal length, take a couple shots to program it in, then go back to f2.0 so it exposes properly, and then any subsequent pictures I take will be at that new focal length. And hopefully your brain hasn't exploded already. I know Jordan's looking at me, he's shell-shocked right now, totally stunned. So, you know, if, if you're still with us here, there's other things that you can do programming-wise by setting different apertures. So, if you go f51 and then take a shot, programs in their normal autofocusing mode, which is for most lens use. But if you go to f57, that will then change it to their slow autofocusing mode, which is supposed to be more compatible with lenses with wider apertures than f1.4. I haven't had a need to use that. I hear that it doesn't really make much difference, but there's two other things you can program. But wait, there's more. No, no more. Jordan, I'm sorry. We've got one more thing here to program, F45. What that will do, whatever your tech art's extended to, it will park it there and lock it there. Uh, and so this could be really handy if you're trying to do close up and you want to have it at full extension and just park it there. Even if you turn the 
camera off and then on again, that's where it will be. Otherwise, it would normally revert to infinity focus. However, I find that I don't have to use this. What I'll do is actually program a button on the camera to go between autofocus, manual focus, toggle, and then I can simply autofocus the lens till it's at an extension I want and then click it into manual focus. That effectively locks the tech art at that distance as well. Either method works. If your nose is bleeding right now and you got like a pounding headache, you should probably stop watching the video and get medical attention. So, you know, up to this point, if I've been using manual focus lenses adapted onto mirrorless bodies, it's just, you know, the procedure of punching in on the back screen, manually focusing precisely, punching out, taking the shot. And that actually does work pretty well. But I have enjoyed having the autofocus capability, especially with the Sony real-time tracking and eye detect, things that can be quite tricky to get perfectly precise with manual focus lenses. And, uh, you know, I will say, although the autofocus is a little slow, it takes a little bit of time to get there, when it does get there, it is actually quite accurate. So I actually really enjoyed that aspect of it. Is this device though right for you? Well, first off, I mean, we've kind of changed things a bit. This review has really been talking about all the fiddly stuff that you have to get through to make it work. And if none of that scares you away, well, then this device might be perfect for you. If you haven't bought an adapter yet and you're looking at getting one, you really want to use manual focus lenses, this can actually make a lot of sense, even though the price point on it is a little bit up there. However, there are some serious limitations still. I mean, the fact of the matter is the autofocus, although very accurate for photography, wasn't able to keep up with even moderate movement. And so that really does limit some of the situations where you might find it useful. Regardless though, the TechArt adapter, the LMEA9 is very innovative. It's very well designed. It's very compact and it does something quite interesting. We can, I think, all appreciate it for that aspect. And as always, we really appreciate you joining us and we'll see you again soon for another episode of DP Review TV.